Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm down in the Lowther Hills today and I've come down to basically scout out a few locations for one of my projects that I'm working on. But I thought I'd bring you guys along with me and uh, let you see what I got up to. So my first spot is these waterfalls here. But what I like about these falls are the heathers that are just starting to come into bloom and those beautiful green ferns. So I'm going to try and grab a couple of shots here. There's also some beautiful old what, kind of stunted trees just further up. So I might see if I can make something of them as well. I've just noticed we've got some lovely thistles down there as well. So I might try and include some of them. Particularly iconic Scottish flower. Eh? That's what we're up to today. Let's get going. Right, let me talk you through this shot. I've come slightly more to the the right of the bridge and because I think that's a better line that you get from the uh, the falls. And what I've done is I've focused on these ferns at the foreground. I'm including the beautiful purples in this heather and that little cascade there. And basically that is the composition. I'm allowing it to disappear. You don't see the sky. I'm cutting out those trees as well. So I'm basically just shooting this part just now. And that's really so I can even out the exposure a little bit. I do like these ferns in the foreground though, so I think I might try and recompose and make a bit more of them. And that looks like it might be the first shot in the bag. I'm using the 16 to 35 millimeter lens just now, and I'm right in at 35 millimeter, so I think I'm probably gonna have to swap lenses to get in a little bit tighter. Either that or climb the wall and <laughs> make my way up the path. But I do like that. And as I say, I do like these trees up here. So if it's not possible to get them using the 24 to 105 lens, then I'm gonna have to go over the wall anyway. But I do like that. And it's not a bad first shot, I think. Right, what about this shot? Um, what I've done is I've focused on this rock here. I'm shooting at F20, so I'm gonna have quite a big depth of field anyway. But I do like the way we've got the waterfall coming in, running alongside. The, the main feature is actually the rock and the, um, the heather here. But I like the fact that we've got the waterfall dropping in, curving round and then dropping out the bottom right of the frame. I think that's quite a nice shot. As always, I'm bracketing the exposure slightly, so I'm including um, a faster shutter speed to try and freeze some of the detail in the water here, but then I'm also shooting at quite a slow shutter speed in order to try and capture the detail in the foreground here, and in particular, the, the, the heather. So that looks okay on the back of the camera. It looks not too bad, so I, I think this could well be shot number two. Right, what do you make of this? Basically what I've done is I've focused on this tree and I like the way we've got this secondary tree in the background there. You've got the, the waterfall working its way through the frame and then dropping down just below. I quite like it like this as a horizontal format, but what I might do is flip the camera over once I've taken this shot and see if there's something to be made from a, a portrait orientation as well. But yeah, I like that. I do like that. We've kind of lost the, the light on the the heather now so the purple's not quite as obvious but still a nice shot
yeah, I've switched over to um, vertical format and that seems to work a little bit better. So the shot's essentially these trees here down to about there, but it's in vertical crop and that kind of makes more of the waterfall, but I'm still focusing, well, I've, I've dropped the focus point from the tree down to this point here because that's about a third of the way, mm, two, about half the way into the image. And so that should give me front to back focus. But yeah, quite like that. Nice shot. It's starting to cloud over and we've just felt the first drop or two of rain. So I think we're not going to get any dramatic light on this. But yeah, for, for, for what it is, it's, it looks like a nice shot. Probably going to be another one of these moody, muted colour type things. Even though I keep getting accused of oversaturating things. Um, what I've done is I've come a little bit further to the left now and that's allowing me to pretty much shoot that boulder straight on so I'm kind of looking at it from this kind of angle. I'm still on the 105 lens and I'm shooting at around about 50 millimetres and that's allowing me to include both the boulder and the heathers that I was interested in here. This fall and these old trees in the background I'm still excluding the sky, so the composition is pretty much that. Shooting in vertical format though, so probably cutting off about here and again about here and the entire frame as it appears just now horizontally. So yeah, that's another, another take and that is allowing me to make the most of the beautiful texture in this rock and also those purple heathers while also including the trees that had caught my eye and the waterfall itself. Right, I was actually just about to move on and it dawned on me, <laughs> accidentally, I must say, uh, as I was moving away, I still had the camera at 105 millimetres, so it was quite zoomed in and I realised that there might actually be quite an intimate shot here. You know, so you've got the main falls, this little secondary uh, cascade coming down here, the rock and the heather, which was what was catching my eye earlier, are much larger in the frame and I think there might actually be a shot there. So I'm going to see if I can grab that just now, and then I'll move on. Right, so here we are at the the Menok Pass. Great spot for camping, by the way. There's there's been a lot of like, tents and stuff like that all the way along the pass, but in particular, I'm loving the amount of heather that we've got on the hills. So I'm probably going to work with that. This is absolutely beautiful. The it's just a a mass of heather, uh, and I love. The contrast again with the, the heather and the grass. I've been a little bit quiet just now because down below me there's a tent pitched. And uh, I don't particularly want to 
disturb anyone, but that looks lovely, doesn't it? There are some little waterfalls down at the other end, so what I might do is go along to the top, the end of this little uh, hill, and see if there's a shot or two up there where I can include the waterfall, because that would really draw the eye, being a, a brighter part of the, the scene. But just up here, this, these little heather-covered hills are just fantastic. The trick, as always, is to try and exclude the sky with this type of shot. Otherwise you've got a bit of a nightmare when it comes to exposure. That does seem to be getting brighter there. If we could get some direct light on this hillside here, then that would be absolutely beautiful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a vertical uh, crop where we've got this V, that V, the next V, and then there's another one just further up. So you basically got um, this V-shaped valley receding from the camera. And all we need now is just a little hint of direct light. Fingers crossed. I've been shooting vertical crops, but I think I might actually try and grab a horizontal or two as well because that allows you to include more green and that, in turn, really emphasises the, the purple of the, the heather. This is lovely. Oh yeah, look at this. I've come along a little bit closer to the edge and that allows us to make more of this little burn as it winds its way up the hill between these heather covered slopes and disappears up into those V-shaped valleys again. I think that looks incredible, I really do. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you what, see if I've got people accusing me of oversaturating the greens. <laughs> I'm going to get dogs of use for this purple because that is incredible. The, the colour contrast between the purple and the green is just phenomenal. And the closer in you go, the more uh, extreme it seems to become. Just need to make sure, yeah, like that, that I can exclude the sky. I've just noticed we've got what looks like a path here, which is actually heading down over that little fall there. So I'm going to take a walk down there and see if there's a, a composition that would be or two down there. Because we've got again another V shape there, and I might be able to look up behind this hill and see what's there.
Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? There does seem to be a little cascade just in about there, which I might try and get to. My problem is this path is <laughs> unbelievably narrow. It is certainly less than two uh, feet wide. And by feet, I mean actual human feet, not <laughs> not 12 inch. Uh, it can't be any more than seven or eight inches wide, the path. And it's got quite a steep drop at the side there. But that little cascade up there in the distance does look as if it might well be worth the effort. So I'm going to pack the camera away just now because that's kind of knocking me off balance as I walk. And uh, we'll make our way over there and then I'll set the camera up again. Right, I've come a little bit further along. And as you can see, that little waterfall is quite nice, just nestled in amongst another one of these V-shaped valleys, but also the, the beautiful heather in the background. Now, I have to be very careful here because I'm kind of shooting up a little bit towards the waterfall. I'm slightly lower, and if you see this, if I raise the camera even just a little, then we're catching the sky. So I'm having to be sure to exclude that. But, yeah, I quite like that. I quite like the fact that I've got it off, as you can see, just slightly to the right of the frame, because I don't want it smack bang centre. And that's allowing me to make the most of, again, this kind of V-shape here. Another one in the background. And make the most of this incredible colour contrast between these greens and the purples. That looks as though it's got a little bit of potential as well, doesn't it? But the only problem is I would have to clone out that tent and also my own car. But it does look nice. It does look very nice. And you've got this beautiful little fall here as well. And another one there. This is a beautiful location. And yet again, one that I've never shot before. All right, the rain's definitely on, so I'm just going to leave head back to the car just now because I've rather stupidly <laughs> left my waterproof jacket in the car. Made it out of the, <laughs> the slightly iffy path. If you come here it's not actually in any way dangerous. I made it dangerous by not wearing the correct shoes. I attempted it in some old worn out Doc Martens rather than my walking boots which are sitting in the car. So it's my own fault. <laughs> 